But yeah, David, why don't you tell us how you viewed your time here over the last two and a half seasons so far? So if I look back to when we started with this then, I mean, the motive of the people involved was simply to put Premiership rugby uh, on the field in Yorkshire. It's as simple as that. That's the only objective we had in that three-year plan, and it's still the only objective we have now. So against that test, we didn't achieve what we wanted, but we did make progress on quite a lot of fronts, I think. The first one was that um, we were in 10th position in the championship when we got involved and looking at the wrong end of the table. So clearly that had to be transformed and was transformed by the recruitment of a squad for the following season, the coaching staff. And we then ended up in the semi-final playoffs um, against a very committed side from elsewhere in Yorkshire and uh, didn't win that. This time we got to the final uh, competition we'd never been in before in the final. Uh, two very competitive games against the relegated club from the previous season, London Irish. Uh, but we didn't achieve the outcome we wanted. So I think there's been a lot of progress made over that two and a half year period on the field, academy expansion from 60 youngsters involved to 800, more progress there, and a very committed and strong shareholder group that came together over a three year period and funded it to the tune of 2.8 million. So th that's how I assess progress. But the aim was Premiership, yes. not achieved. You look at it now and say, smaller budget this year, yeah. smaller playing squad, less chance of being promoted. So how do you justify it not being a failure so far? Well, we never said that we had to get Premiership, um, uh, cheap Premiership in three year period. But that was we, the aim. We said we want it as soon as possible, mm. and we still do. So as far as this year is concerned, small squad this year is because the income levels have dropped predictably from last year to this year. Um, we'd had um, substantial funding from Lee's Beckett and also Premier Rugby for a number of years and that's fallen substantially although we will be signing a new deal with Lee's Beckett very soon different type of deal altogether um, so the income levels go down and therefore in order to enable us to move the club forward we have to cut the cost base which we've done so we reduce the squad size pro rata but we'll still be investing 1.5 million in the whole rugby endeavour for this next season and I believe we'll still be spending in the top three or four clubs in the championship with our rugby budget so it's not a complete retraction it's we need to put things in shape now to push forward over three years with this plan and put the funding in place to achieve promotion. So just be clear we'll just go through the figures so budget for this year is 1.5 roughly is that right? What will be spending budget this year? For, on, for this on coming season, for the rugby budget, what will it be? The the budget for the first team squad this season will be one point two million. Okay. And what was it last season? Two million. Okay. What will be an average premiership rugby budget for a season? Just to know where we're aiming to get this club. The, the squad the the, um, the salary cap in in premiership rugby has moved up markedly over the last three years. Now it's seven million plus two marquee players. Mm -hmm. So at the top end, they'll be spending nine million. I'd have thought. Uh, quite a number will be spending more around the six million type of number in the Premiership. That's the difference between Championship and Premiership. But the income levels are fundamentally different as well, Gareth. So um, continued presence in the Premiership produces increasing income every year for the clubs that are staying in the Premiership. So um, it's not a totally imbalanced picture, but. The lifting of the salary cap over the last three years means it's a more expensive competition now than it was then. So how do you plan to fill that gap over the next three years and get to where you need to be financially? So um, the, the plan really is based upon um, the knowledge that we have some people who are really interested in making significant contributions to that as soon as they can, as soon as they can. So we believe we can get that funding. We have reasons to believe we can get that funding over that period of time. And the process we use to do that is to approach particular individuals who love rugby, believe in the same idea of a premiership side in Yorkshire, and are prepared to put the money to help us do it. And we'll start that process again now. We've done that twice already, nine shareholders. We want to expand that to, well, there's no limit on it, but I think somewhere around 20 would be realistic. So are you happy with the amount of interest that has come into the club or is there still a frustration that not enough people are interested in investing 
in this rugby club? Well, I suppose there's always, there's always a feeling that we should be able to do more. Um, a lot of people have played rugby union at school. Um, a lot of people believe in Yorkshire having a premiership side in place and we just need to convince them that it's something that they should be prepared to support financially. I think there are, um, one of the, the things that's happened with this is that all the shareholders have got the same objective, there's no plan B as far as we're concerned, it's premiership rugby. Um, that shareholder group is a, is a fantastic group of people who've all got different ideas on things that we can you know, utilise and take advantage of. We want more people like that, people who believe in the purpose and have got the attitude to back it up and have a good time with each other in doing it. Vision-wise, how do you sell that this club is something worth investing in, whether it's a fan time, whether it's a player coming here in the future, whether it's someone, most importantly, investing their money at a time when it looks like it's in its weakest position it's probably ever been in? How do you change the face of that? Why would you say it's in the weakest position it's been Smallest in? Smallest budget? I think so. Least from the last few years. Have you spent more money, you're spending more money this year than over the last three years? No. Least chance of going promoted. Can't get promoted this year by the looks of it. Smallest playing squad. So people will look at it and say, it looks in a worse position than last season, than two seasons ago, than three seasons ago, four seasons ago. People will say that. Why would you say it isn't? in that particular position? Because it's a three-year plan. Mm. And uh, this season, what we have to do is get our cost base in line with the income levels, mm. but still make a substantial investment. We see the consequences of what happens when you don't do that with other clubs. We're not going to go down that route. So we take the three-year view. We will need funding to achieve promotion to the Premiership of not less than £8 million over three years, and that's what we're going to do our best to get. Why will this three-year plan be different than the last three-year plan? Because the funding will be substantially more in this next three years than it was in the last three. Why? How do you know that? Well, we don't know that with absolute certainty mm. as we sit here now. It's our job to go out and get it. So if we believe there's only one option we want to pursue, it's up to us to get the people involved to make it real. Mm. But of course, we are some way down the road with discussions with a number of people who will want to make a contribution as soon as they're in a position to do so. So we've got to have a reason to believe we can achieve this outcome, and that's why. So what will you, hindsight's a wonderful thing, what have you learned over the last couple of years? What will you might do differently in the next three years to be even more successful then? <laughs> if, if you're saying the last three years, couple of years have been successful. Well, um, most of us have never been involved in running a rugby union club before. So there's been quite a lot of working out how to get the balance right between the investment in the playing squad, the investment in the coaching staff, things of that nature, and, and also how to balance that against the need to be competitive. That's been one learning thing. The second thing now, uh, moving on to be more successful, really does revolve around the question of funding. Now, you've got to be able to spend it well, but you've got to be able to get it to spend it in the first place. So I think this needs proper planning about what type of squad you want to recruit, where you're going to get them from in the medium term. So as soon as the funding is available, we'll be constructing the map of the talent that we need to get promoted. That, so it's a very forward-looking thing. It's a three-year program again is this. And we want to achieve promotion by winning the competition in those three years or because the league has expanded. How will you be looking at the actual management of the, of the team moving it forward when it was announced Brian Redpath was leaving and James Lowes was coming back in as head coach there was talk of a performance director or a new director of rugby um, is that something that's still in the pipeline what's happening with that and how will you look at the structure in the future well that would definitely be in our medium term plan uh, we think the ideal structure is to have a head coach and a general manager of rugby doing the, the off field stuff reporting to a director of rugby and the director of rugby would be the architect of that plan for promotion with much enhanced funding, much larger squad, and the network to get those players to this club from anywhere in the world. So you'll be looking at that over the next sort of year or so then, Correct. by looking at that. Um, again, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Brian Redpath did some very good things at the club. Do you regret keeping him on in January when he announced he was going to go and it seemed he wasn't getting the best out of the players at the time? Do you think it would have been better now to have 
maybe try a different head coach to get the best out of him. I know it's all hindsight important, but it's I think it's something that people want to know what actually really happened there. My personal view on that was that um, he had a very high level of commitment to finishing the season. We had no reason to believe that he would do anything other than do that in a very professional way. We had some reverses in the early part of the new year against um, Doncaster and Jersey, two tight games. But I actually think that when it came to the, the playoffs and the two games against London Irish, I think we were very competitive in both those games. So I never looked at the failure to achieve promotion as being any reflection on what Brian did. And therefore my response is, no, I don't believe so. I think the, the, the cohesion of that team grew during the year apart from those two reverses that I mentioned, and that those two playoff games, if you, as I put it the other day, you know, if you score 48 points away from home, even when you've got a deficit to make up of 11, you've got to think you've got a chance, haven't you? Mm. Not when you defend that badly. <laughs> you can't concede 55. No, exactly. So look, looking at the, um, the bigger picture then, I think when you first came in, ring fence looked like it was more on the table than maybe it is now. Do you feel let down by the governing bodies that they don't seem to be looking after you or the championship as much as we'd all hope? Was that unfair on them? I think there's um, a need for clarity about what the championship is about as a competition. You know, is it is it there in its own right? It's the top level of the professional game that's controlled by the rugby union, by the RFU. So, uh, you know, it should be a pretty important competition, but I think its purpose needs to be clear. I think the introduction of A-leagues by the Premier Rugby teams uh, changed that perspective somewhat. And I think there's got to be proper funding in place to allow it to complete that purpose and put credible teams, uh, players on the field every week, uh, appropriately coached, appropriately safeguarded from medical point of view and things like that. And if it's a professional league, it needs to be run in a professional way. And I think the RFU can help with that. Do you, um, how much influence are you having in conversations about the, the game at the top level moving forward? Is that something you remain involved in with Premier Rugby? Yeah, I mean, we're still shareholders in Premier Rugby for another year. So um, we attend all the board meetings of Premier Rugby. So we now know what's going on there. Um, Ian's position on the professional game board is another avenue of um, allowing us to understand how the future might evolve and how we should position for that. And it's up to us to demonstrate why we should be in the Premiership and I think we've got lots of the piece parts in place around the academy, the stadium and the remaining two elements have got to be a squad that's going to cost a lot more than we're talking about now will have to be put in place at some point in the three years and secondly we've got to get the money to do it. With the squad this year it is operating on, on a smaller scale this year you've had to cancel a friendly against Gloucester how concerned are you with the squad numbers? this year? Yeah, the squad numbers are a lot lighter and we're more vulnerable to injuries, that, that's for certain, and we've got some of those at the moment. We think we'll be able to strengthen that squad uh, later on in the season, over the probably two months time, that sort of order. Um, so that's how we're approaching this. But that squad, we believe, will be very competitive and very determined and will play in a style that will produce entertaining rugby to watch. That's Jimmy's hallmark, as you remember, from uh, his previous time with us so you know we're looking forward to something different this season yeah it was fantastic we'll be played last time is that embarrassing though having to you're a premiership club or want to be a premiership club but you can't fulfill a friendly is that embarrassing well it looked like that but I mean the the purpose really is that we've got to be in shape for the game against London Scottish and that if that had produced another injury that would have made that a lot more difficult so that was the basis on which the decision was made I believe so last couple of things then I'd win the lottery tomorrow because I've got the brain to be a successful businessman like yeah. you. Why <laughs> would I or anybody else invest my time and money into Yorkshire Carnegie going forward in this next three year plan when it hasn't happened over the last four or five years? Because A, you believe in what we're trying to do. Number two, you can have discussions with the current shareholders about the extent to which they want to support it and that will encourage you to do something. You can have a lot of fun doing this. And if you love rugby union and you live in Yorkshire or you're from Yorkshire, it's a worthwhile thing to do. That's why. And for fans, what keeps them coming? Because a lot of them will feel, many are very loyal, yep. but many are hurt or giving up or thinking this is the end. How do you, again, do you keep them coming? 
Well, I mean, the purpose of these conversations is to demonstrate it's not the end. I mean, the video that we made earlier this week says this is not the end. I mean, we've renewed the vision. There's only one objective, and that's Premier Rugby. You know, we don't have an objective to produce any other outcome. And we've got reasons to believe we can do it, and it depends on funding, and we've got reasons to believe we can do that as well. So it's not the end, and in the meantime, there'll be some excellent rugby played. So I think for our loyal supporters who come in week in, week out, they will see a very competitive, determined team playing good rugby on the field. Yeah? Will we get another three, 4,000 for home games with just that? No, we won't. That will have to come when the Premiership's achieved.